Hey there, math students. We're going to look at a few ways to compare fractions. And we're going to start with a couple of specific scenarios, and then we're going to go to the when all else fails scenario. So here's scenario one. Both of the fractions you're comparing have the same numerator. In this case, I use two unit fractions, one fourth and one eighth. Now, we can then say, okay, well obviously the numerators appear to be equal. The denominator, the denominator is where it's at for us. Now we have to think about, okay, well what do these denominators tell us? Well, I'll tell you what they don't tell us. What appears to be bigger isn't always bigger, because these are fractions, for goodness sake. So let's draw this out so we can, can get a picture of our comparison. If I've got one-fourth going on, and it's going to look a little something like this. Not perfect, but not too bad. And one out of four, we can shade in. If I've got one-eighth going on, I'm going to have eight equal parts. Now, eight in whole numbers would be bigger, but take a look. When we take one whole and we break it into eight equal parts, well, each part is smaller than we take when we take one whole and we break it into four equal parts. So the thing to keep in mind is the larger the denominator appears to be, the smaller the pieces are going to be. So in this case, one-fourth is definitely greater than one-eighth. Again, if you have the same numerator, you want to look at that denominator and remember, bigger is does not always mean greater. But what about if it's the denominator that's the same? Now when the denominator's the same, all we're really talking about is, hey, this is what we count by. We can count halves, thirds, fourths, but in this case we're going to count by fifths. So then our question is, which is greater? three-fifths or four-fifths? Well, if you imagine a pie, which would be more pie? Three out of the five slices of pie that are in there or four out of the five slices of pie? Because all those pieces are the same size, one-fifth. It's going to be four-fifths that's greater because in both cases we're counting by the same, whoop, <laughs> we're counting by the same increments. A fifth is a fifth is a fifth. Now, sometimes fractions that you're comparing don't have the same numerator or the same denominator. Or you may forget the two, those two rules that I just talked about. The good news is there's an, a, a scenario that we can do when all else fails. When all else fails, if I'm comparing fractions, what I want to do is create equivalent fractions that have a common denominator. So here I've got two-thirds and four-fifths. Thirds and fifths are different increments. I'm not going to be able to count them together easily. So I want to create an equivalent fraction for each of these that's the same amount but broken into pieces that I can count and compare. Well, how do I do this? Well, the good news is we just need to find a common multiple of 3 and 5. Don't forget multiples. Here we're talking skip counting. So if I start skip counting by 3's, maybe do 4 or 5, then I start skip counting by fives, eventually I'm going to find a number in common. In this case, 15 is a multiple of 3 and 15 is a multiple of 5. So that means that 15 is a denominator I can create an equivalent fraction for both fractions. Well, that's great for the denominator, but what about the numerators? They can't stay the same because two-thirds definitely can't be the same as two-fifteenths. I need to think to myself of a math, I need to create a mathematical rule to get from one fraction to the other. 
So if I'm going to go from thirds to fifteenths, I have to say, well, you know, what would I have to do to a 3 to get it to 15? Well, 15 is 5 times more than 3, so times 5 can be my rule. And if that's what happened with the denominator, then by gum, by gosh, by golly, that would be the same rule for the numerator. Very common with fractions. If you do something to the denominator, the same thing must be done to the numerator. And in this case, I would multiply by 5, and it turns out 2 thirds is equivalent to 10 fifteenths. With 4 fifths, I notice 15 is 3 times as much as 5. So multiply by 3 is going to have to be my rule. I'm going to follow that same rule with my numerator and find that 4 fifths is equivalent to 12 fifteenths. Now I can compare two fractions that are equivalent and have a common denominator. So my only real question is, which is greater, 10 or 12? Well, 12 is greater. And so that means that 2 thirds is going to be less than 4 fifths. So when we're looking for cre um, equivalent fractions to help compare numbers, we have to remember to think about a common multiple, use that as the denominator, and then create rules, or find rules, really discover the rules, that are going to help us find equivalent fractions that we can compare more easily. You can do this thing. If you're confused, go back and watch again. Pause it. Take your time.